I'm Carrington McDuffie. This is Star Seeds of Freedom. And I've got something really fun for you today. Well, it's a beautiful day in Texas. And what have we here? Oh, uh, coming at you. Oh, yeah. doing hey good Carrington. great to see you yeah you too i've wanted to see this car and see what you're up to with this you mad speed racer well you know somebody's gotta go fast <laughs> <laughs> well let's talk about you got time to talk a little about this yeah, and I some do. other things i do that'd be fun hey let's do it all right okay all right okay well this is pretty fun welcome to star seeds of freedom Today I'm with Alan Robinson. Um, howdy, Alan. How you doing? Hey, doing swell. <laughs> well, oh, it's so great to be here with you on this beautiful day. And um, so, Alan, you're a wide-ranging stuntman, and I, we're seeing you in a car today. But you've done a wide range of stunts all your life, right? This is just one of them. Well, this is a. Uh... Yeah, this is an old car, and I'm an old guy. So, <laughs> yeah, I've been doing stunts for 37 years. I got started in 1985. So I've been doing a long time, and I do all types of movie stunts, from, from vehicle stunts to being lit on fire and fights ooh, and falls ooh. and crashes. And, um, you know, I love it. It's, you know, I like to say I haven't uh, had to work a day in my life. Right. That's I get, awesome. I get to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> but it is hard work, right? you got to be in oh, really yeah. excellent shape, and you have to really know what you're doing. Well, no doubt. Yeah. You, 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 yeah. Otherwise, you can't do the job or you get hurt. But sure, we, we, we train all the time, um, training in the, you know, a variety of things and cross-training, because you never know. You may get that phone call, and tomorrow i got to be doing – some something I've never done before, and I got just a, a few hours to learn how to do it. Hmm. Um, so uh, we're always training. It's always about rehearsing and training, but uh, definitely, you know, staying in shape, staying flexible is key too. Because <clears throat> you know, if something goes wrong, and you're flexible, you're less likely to get hurt. Yeah, for sure. And you're definitely taking a lot of risks with everything that you do. Well, the risk is involved, and we know that when we sign up. Um, I like to call myself a high-risk illusionist. Okay, talk to me about what that. <laughs> talk to me about what that means to you. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, just a term because we, what we do is high risk, and we are creating an illusion because um, even though there is a lot of risk and we are in peril uh, a lot of the time, um, our job is to to make it look worse than it is as well so we're only making movies you have to always remember that we're not mm -hmm. daredevils where we're doing it just for stunt's sake so yeah right but there is danger involved and there is so what there i was <laughs> wait a minute well you tell me i mean okay so <laughs> this is um you know my theme is freedom from whatever point of view i can discover it and everybody discovers it from their own point of view and what interests me about the stunt work is that you, in order to be able to really do it successfully, you've got to have tremendous, not only the skill, but the confidence in order to have the freedom to do the work properly. Isn't that right? Well, that's, or how that's, do you how do you approach that? Yeah, that's, that's, that's great, uh, Carrington, because, uh, you know, f freedom and what I do is freedom of fear. Uh, freedom of uh, of being, let's say, paralyzed of fear because fear. I love fear. Um, I like to say the day I lose a sense of fear is the day I need to get out of the business mm -hmm. because fear is what keeps us safe. When I sense fear, I make sure I double, triple, and quadruple check the things that are making me fear fearful, and that is a safety valve. So fear is a good thing. Um, I like to say that fear will either empower you, which it does me, or mm -hmm. paralyze you. So we've all known those people when they're in a fearful situation, they just don't know how to act, and then they get, they, they freeze up. It's one type of person. Others, when you they sense fear, it, it, to me, things slow down. When I get involved in an emergency uh, situation, things really get exciting. 
man, my world slows down and it's methodical and it's a, just the way my brain works. I don't know if that's innate or trained, but, um, but I love, I love recognizing fear and, um, you know, the, there's the old acronym fear is, uh, uh, uh false evidence appearing real. Hmm. Uh, but once you can handle fear, your freedom to, to be yourself and do the activity that you're doing is, is, is so free <laughs> for lack of better words, but you know, so there's definitely a freedom when you can understand fear. Yeah, and like as you say, it's a safety valve. I mean, we we talk about fear, you know, the difference, you know, fear being the opposite of love and all this stuff. And I, I think there's a lot to that. But fear has a very real place and a very real function in our survival and also our thrill quotient. <laughs> because, it, right? I mean, without yeah. that, why would you care? I mean, the, I'm similar where the day I get on a stage and I'm I'm not nervous will be the day to figure out something to scare me you know yeah. to keep it to keep it fresh and so it has that quality of um goosing us speaking of goosing <laughs> <laughs> i have some questions for you can you show me around this car oh, why, certainly. all right hey, you know as we move up the front you can see that that uh it's got a name her name is Lucy Goosey. Yeah. Uh, Lucy Goosey um, uh, is just an old name for an old race car. This is a 1931 um, Model A Roadster Hot Rod. Yeah. And it embodies the beginning of hot rodding back in the day when maybe in the late 30s and, and um, a high school kid wanted to go out and go faster and beat his friend down the street. The cheapest way to go faster was take off all the stuff you didn't need. So all the fenders and stuff had been removed from the car. That's why it's all stripped down. And that way they could go faster. So Lucy Goosey is a representation of a 1931 hot rod race car. Yeah, it's so... It's original 1931 engine. And it's a 40 horsepower four banger. And for short, they just call it a banger. Hmm. It's a... It's a, it's a pretty cool motor that um, Henry Ford made back in the day. Pretty reliable. So um, this car still resembles all the originality with mechanical brakes or just rods that, that operate your brakes. There's no juice brakes, as they call it, or hydraulics. So how do the brakes work then? Are they actually rubbing on the... Yeah, so the brakes are like, operate inside the wheel well, this, uh, in, inside the wheel the same way where the brake shoes push out on the oh, brake pads, push out. It's brake pads, I but, see. But in order to activate that, instead of being hydraulic like our modern day brakes, they're just rods. So this lever is connected to my pedal in the, in the floor. Oh, so that operates the rear brake and that's the front brake and that just turns and just pushes and pulls the brakes. So well, and brakes, rudimentary. Uh -huh. and, and so brakes, well, that makes me think of the fear thing again, because you do sometimes have to uh, put Trust. on the brakes. Right? So, so, so yeah, so, <laughs> so there's a, there, you know, what we do, we, we have to, to, to have freedom to, to express ourselves in our creative manner and, and making stunts. The freedom is done by trusting what we've rehearsed, tested, and planned, yeah. and that that comes with rehearsal. It comes with research. Um, it comes with sometimes. Sometimes it's just faith, you know. Yeah. But seldom do we just go, "Hey, I hope it works." <laughs> you know, we're going to check it out because I want to work tomorrow. I'm going to be around tomorrow, mm -hmm. and that's what a stuntman is compared to a daredevil who doesn't necessarily take those chances. So how does that compare to um, that crazy motorcyclist who, uh, <laughs> who broke his bones over and over and uh, kept on? Evil. He's a daredevil. Yeah, evil. Evil can evil self-confess daredevil. Yeah. Yeah, he, he did stunts for stunts' sake, and he was yeah. proud that he had broken bones. And that was kind of a badge of honor to him. As in our business, if... You know, we, we will get banged up and hurt from time to time, but if you're getting hurt all the time, I like to say that you're not a very good stunt guy. Yeah. Because, you know, we're, we, some stunts we know we're going to get bumps, we're going to get bruises, we may get some small cuts. Every time I go through a, a glass window, there's always going to be these tiny little cuts. <laughs> Every time I fall down a flight of stairs or get hit by a car and tumble on the pavement, um, I mean, everybody does that, right? 
Um, so, <laughs> no, gets hit I, by I a car you know, daily. Yeah, well, it's gonna you're gonna you're gonna get a little bit sore from that. But yeah. If I think I'm gonna break a bone and get or or worse or damage expensive equipment. We're not gonna do it. So yeah. we're gonna test and rehearse and eliminate that. Yeah. yeah. So um, tell me about why this is. Uh, there's a number on this car. Two fifty one. What does that signify? 251. Well, you know, I took that number. It was my, my race number when I raced super bikes. Oh, okay. So, you know, huh. part of my cross training as a stunt guy, I was skydiving every weekend. And then I was racing motorcycles. And I raced the potty for years. And road racing is that you're on a road course and you're in different classes. And, um, and for a number of years, my race number um, while racing road racing was 251. Now I don't road race any longer, but so I took that number and, and put that onto the car to, um, you know, and that, so that had special meaning to me. Yeah. And that's how yeah. I got it. Yeah, it's, numbers are important. It, it adds pizzazz, you know, <laughs> it adds energy. Well, I wonder if um, you would tell me a little bit more about the different kind of stunt work that you've done and, um, how that felt and different experiences with that. Maybe we could set a spell and go over some of that. What do you think? Hey, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, this is a fun car to sit in and drive in. Hey, it's a piece of history. Yeah. It's an antique. Yeah, it's an antique. like me. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> and it's your personal history, too. Well, you know, we all have a history. You yeah. Know, and, and, yeah. Um, and I think the freedom of this car being around... 90 how many years later 1931 to 2023 yeah it's, it's had the freedom of a junkyard <laughs> well i'd like to know more about really what's behind stunt work i mean i know my listeners are going to want to know all about everything that you do physically how you do it yeah. and but and that all is completely fascinating to me but also the psychology of it and what you were talking about with preparation um you can't have that freedom without the preparation right no, that's that's right yeah that you know it's all about prep if i'm doing a fire burn and i'm fully engulfed on fire it's it, it becomes not about me but about the crew i have around me that setting me up putting my clothes on protective gears and then the guys with the extinguishers that are putting me out it's out of my control oh man okay those guys aren't good then i'm toast yeah <laughs> so, so you gotta have the best guys and trust them and be absolutely. able to trust them and stunt guys trust each other we have this unbound thing you may have not worked with a guy before ever but you're going to do everything 110 percent you know keep him safe mm -hmm. because it's just what we do it's a it's amazing bond but the stuntman mindset is you know we go through momentary intense focus right. you block you compartmentalize you block everything out because you can't have distractions yeah and so that 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 is one thing that we do have in stunt guys that is very unique is intense focus um it gives us the freedom to just be confident in the stunt that we're doing that we we know what we're doing sometimes we have to have a plan b okay if this mm -hmm. happens i gotta do this mm -hmm. you know and you're 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 meant to, I, I like to say I dirt dive a lot and dirt dive what that means is because I was a professional skydiver and um, you know over 1100 skydives and when I when you practice a skydive on the ground you're practicing it on the dirt we call it dirt diving so you practice the skydive and it's called dirt diving so we do that with stunts where we practice and I play it through mentally in my head and rehearse it in my mind in real time how things are going to go that way when it does happen it's not foreign to my mind that makes sense yeah and it sounds like there's a kind of a fraternity amongst stunt performers because of that trust thing oh definitely definitely yeah. a fraternity yeah. because of, uh, we share this very intense exciting moment yeah. um, um, and and you you don't have to work with a guy very long you know you, you have an instant bond that will last for years right because well your life is in their hands yeah. right and it, yeah. so if you're doing a scene where um, you catch on fire you're wearing a fire retardant suit right I hope so you hope so okay so <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. 
Well, well, <laughs> Tell me what you mean by I hope well, so. Well, I hope so. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily a suit. It's different layers. Oh, so, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you'll be wearing something that's fire resistant, fire uh, protection. Mm -hmm. So heat is another big element. Heat's a byproduct of fire and, and heat will burn you as well. So not only is it flame, so you're going to cool down your body. You're going to cool down the layers that are next to your body. So we use a stunt gel. A stunt gel, mm -hmm. uh, it's a especially made gel that we soak our our um, our protective garments in and that gel we usually keep in a in a cooler on ice until the time we put them on and so th these garments that you're putting on are already chilled so your core body temperature oh. is already lower oh. because within 30 seconds all of a sudden you're hot right as hell so <laughs> if you start it you start here, and I mean, it gives you a place where you can go a little bit longer without getting too hot, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But it's got to happen fast. You don't have that long, right? No, but um, it's it's timing, rehearsal. You yeah. Know, we just don't. Right. We practice. And right. with stunts, we take little steps. It gives us the freedom to do the big steps. Uh, meaning, we don't start with the big stunt necessarily. If somebody's getting into the stunt business, which mm -hmm. is also a real common question. How do I get into stunts? Mm. Yeah. Um, you start with little things. I got started because I started doing live shows. And then I ended up working for Disney. And we moved down to Orlando. I played Indiana Jones for years. And, and I did these live shows looking at these little stunts. But when you get into bigger stunts, you break it down into smaller pieces. So I would never entrust a brand new stunt guy to do a, a 3,000 foot bungee jump out of a hot air balloon and then, <laughs> and then cut loose and parachute down like, like I end up doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is that kind of one of the most extreme things that you've done? Would you say? Well, yeah, that was extreme, and it was something I um, that I designed. Too. Oh, cool! So I was a uh, I was in the uh, bungee business. I was skydiving, and I owned a hot air balloon. Oh, <laughs> oh look at you! Yeah, well, I I bought it to start a bungee jumping business where we jumped out of the balloon until oh. the, the FAA shut me down, slapped me on the wrist, and said, "No, you can't, you can't jump out of objects." And, and so, okay. I ended up with a balloon. So I did balloon uh, champagne balloon flights, but uh -huh. I I did this big extreme bungee jump. It's kind of my coup de grace of the stunt of my bungee business, and I made personally made this cord uh, that stretched the length of a football field, and. At, when we were uh, in the balloon up at 3,000 feet, I jump out, I bounce, recoil. Now I have a pilot and a crew guy in there to get me out. But I jump out, I bounce, and then after I quit bouncing, then I cut loose of the bungee cord. Uh -huh. I fell another 800 feet and then threw out a parachute and landed safely. So I guess, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you don't have a fear of heights. Um, you know what I have? Hmm. I have great respect for heights. So okay. fear in this case, yes I fear I don't fear heights, I fear sudden landing. Right. right. I don't I don't I don't fear falling. I fear the sudden stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's kind of your perspective and that's the way I look at it. Mm -hmm. I love being in the air and falling. It's a great feeling. And you, if you can do that with freedom knowing you're not gonna get hurt like yeah. I have a parachute, I've got an airbag, uh, whatever the device you're going to use to keep it, get you down safely right but the the um you know the, the fear of uh fear of heights actually was one of my um one of my fortes in the stunt business is being around heights so i've been on the side of the hoover dam i've had my toes on the side of a, a skyscraper 600 feet high with just my toes on the edge for a commercial mm -hmm. um i love that environment you know why it's a mental challenge. Yeah. There's nothing physical. You don't have to be like the big bodybuilder, you know, super acrobat doing backflips. You have to take your mind and go, I'm going to concentrate. This is a good one. Yeah. Concentrate on the business at hand that's standing there, not the consequence. Mm -hmm. Not, oh my gosh, if I fell, I'd fall, I'd be forever, and I'd hit the ground, and I would die. Yeah. That, that, that story, you don't, you don't, you concentrate on the business at hand. If you have to stand on the edge, you could do that right now. I could do that right now. You don't think about, because gravity works the same at 600 feet as it does at, at ground level. Right. So you concentrate on that. And then when the stunt's over and you're off the edge, then you can go, 
Oh my goodness, Whew, that was a good one. <laughs> well, I've often thought, I'm, I'm not crazy about heights, but I don't have a particular fear of them, but I've often not thought when I've been in a place that was high, Empire State Building, whatever, that if you could stand at the very edge and just have it be as if the step down was only, you know, this far, if you could, if you could under, if you could understand it that way or think of it that way, I guess, yeah. that maybe you could survive the experience, you know, mentally. Of, well, um, that's what it is. It is a mental challenge, mm -hmm. and, it, 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 and it, that does, I believe, take training. I was going to say that sounds like discipline. It, it takes training and discipline and trust. Okay, uh -huh. I trust that I can stand there and not accidentally just fall forward. Right. Okay, I don't have an inner ear problem where I'm like. All, and all of a sudden, I'm going to fall fall forward. Right. And most people can do that particular stunt, stand 600 feet with your toes on the edge of a building. You could do it if you it could block it out in your mind that you're just thinking, you know, I just need to stand. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not, uh, I, you know. But, I don't but stand and fall normally. Yeah, right. So, so I should be able to stand here. And are you yeah. on a line of any kind, or does well, it depend? Well, we're not stupid. We're not stupid. Yeah. We put a line on. Yeah. If you can get away with it, and we we make sure we do. Yeah. We're we're not daredevil. So in this case, with the um, it was a Wrigley Spearmint Gum commercial, standing on the top of a uh, skyscraper in L.A., 600 feet high, and uh, I had a safety belt on that you did not see, and I had a, a steel cable running off the back of that. So yeah. if I should fall. I would n not go further than about two feet, and I would be hanging there. Yeah. Now right. that would be really awkward yeah, and scary. Right. But I wouldn't fall to my death. Right. It wouldn't be fun, so and you wouldn't feel good. But <laughs> no, it would save my life. But because of because because of that, you just say that's not an option. I, I don't yeah. rely on that. Uh huh. Although it's there. It's there. I see what you're it's saying. It's like when I skydive. Yeah. I always have two parachutes. Mm -hmm. So there's always a backup, a reserve parachute. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had to use the reserve? I've used it many times. Ah. I've used it many times, and um, ah. when I got into skydiving, I became a parachute rigger, so I'm packing people's reserve parachute, their backup parachute, voluntarily <laughs> as a trained rigger. <laughs> and we have backup parachute skydiving, and the the sport of base jumping, if you're familiar with that, base. I've it, heard base, of it, but yeah. we'll t talk about it. Well, base is an acronym for building antenna span and earth. It's jumping off of fixed oh, objects. Oh. My last two parachute jumps after 1100 skydives, my last two parachute jumps were in Moscow, Russia, outside Moscow. They were two stupidly low base jumps with borrowed Russian base gear. Hmm. And oh. I jumped from 177 feet high which is, it's a, it's, it's a direct bag. So somebody's holding on the top of your parachute and jump off. And I have a, about a four second parachute ride. There's no chance for a backup parachute. So oh. the parachute doesn't open, you're slamming the ground. Oh. Or if the parachute opens a little weird, you're still hitting the ground. It was really stupid. And I did it twice, got away with it. And then I quit skydiving, quit jumping. So um, how did you feel about the borrowed Russian gear? Did you, obviously you must've felt confident enough to, to use it and rely on it and do the stunt. Well, I did, and, and, and because because I was a parachute rigger and I was active in my game, I was a uh, I was a current skydiver. I was active that I I could look at it and go, this is good, this is safe, this is airworthy. Um, I had the knowledge. Right, I see. I had the knowledge. You could inspect it and yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't have the fear because a lot of times fear is what you don't know. So the more you know about something, the less you're afraid of it. Yeah. Okay. How, how many times have you done something like you're afraid of going to uh, do something and then you did it and you're like, what was I so afraid of? <laughs> okay. It was because knowledge, you got to learn what it was about. Yeah. And, and on that note, when we're talking about fear and freedom, lots of times we get fear confused with anxiety because true fear is like being afraid of a saber tooth tiger yeah doing this. it's not like the fear of public speaking right it's, it's a real danger it, it's like real. something could really yeah. mess you up fear in traffic and yeah i'm afraid I, i'm afraid i'm gonna fear that i'm gonna be late for that appointment right that's not real fear that's anxiety that's anxiety but, yeah. but we, we, we tend to put it together um but real fear your, your life's in, in peril yeah you know yeah and, but but I like to say if I feel fear, I'd like to learn more about it. What, what, why is that more? Why? What's, I always tell myself, what's the worst that can happen? 
Right. So sometimes it's like, okay, well, that's bad. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Maybe done. better I'm not. Done. I'm done. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I want to make extra careful, but sometimes it's like, what the worst can happen? Well, I, I get, you know, something very minor mm -hmm. that, that's forgivable. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, and this applies to everything. I mean, that could imply, uh, apply to uh, any risk that you take, you yeah. know, a financial risk. That's what most people, a lot of people deal with sure. as far as like the day-to-day -day stuff. But so is there, um, is there a favorite experience that you've had doing that, that, that you felt like grew you in, in a particular way? Or is it just all kind of like that? Well, you know, there, there are a lot of similarities and there's a lot of differences. That doesn't help your answer. Um, <laughs> That's okay. You can say whatever you yeah, want. I know, I know, but <laughs> what I'm saying is, you know, it's generalizing, um, uh, knowing more. So the more you rehearse something, the more, you're, the more you can rehearse it or know about something. Okay, what's that risk? What's the worst that can happen? What? financial risk what's happened did i lose my life savings or I just lose a small portion mm -hmm. i mean that's what you that's what you're probably thinking yeah okay am i willing to lose that amount and be okay yeah if you're not going to be okay at the end of it that's probably not a good risk right you know so you can apply that to or to everything in 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 life in a sense um you know i um you know um I, you know i it's just I've been doing this for so long, it's just kind of second nature. For yeah, me. yeah. Kind of, kind of. But that's a good point about, um, you know, assessing the amount of risk, because if you go past that point of what you'd be comfortable with, and this is more in daily life, then then you lose your freedom because you're anxious. <laughs> when you're anxious, you're not free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. So, well, uh, and so you've also done driving stunts. Yeah. Um, you know, when I watch movies, I pay a lot of attention to how I'll often roll back and see how the stunts are being done. Or a lot of times with fight scenes, um, I'll turn off the sound because yeah. it helps me to focus on mm. how Good. they're actually, because you know, sound guides everything and music guides yeah. your emotions and all that. So if you turn off the sound and you just watch and see how the fights are being, how they've been choreographed, you can see more clearly that someone isn't necessarily being hit. You know, we know that people aren't really getting beaten up, although things- They're, they're not? It, things, well, things happen by mistake, right? <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. That's that's what it looks like to yeah, me, but- You're right, you're right. <laughs> you're right, but now do accidents do happen, but seldom, because yeah. we, we practice and rehearse. Yeah. But you're, you're absolutely right. So editing is a big point. Yeah. Actually, the way you're shooting it is a, is a, is a big part of it. Yeah. The trend over the last 20 years really has been is really this re, really a free form camera movement that's really moving. Yes. In. Yes. And and mm -hmm. I, it's it's really cool. I have a problem when there's too much of it because you don't see the geography and you really you really miss how cool the fight is because you're so tight on yeah the but they it's, do, it's a style that's it, happening now. yes it started with that nypd <laughs> blue thing where the camera yeah, was yeah, always going yeah. like this and ever since then there's this real handheld look has been a style that yeah. is it's pretty well it's i don't i'm trying to think of what i've seen that doesn't have that now yeah, right. we've all gotten used to it's, it it's a style a trend yeah trend that we're all long, kind of doing it we're used yeah, to seeing it yeah I, we don't even notice it no. i remember f first watching that and being like oh that makes me dizzy yeah. but now we're so used to it and it gives movement there is some of course some, some good value to it i believe in movement and you know the days where the the, the camera was stuck on a tripod yeah and they were just bounced back between these static shots right versus movement which brings more dynamic absolutely and you can emphasize a story um by using movement and yeah. camera movement yeah we're back on the fights so obviously we don't hit each other but the camera sees in two dimensions not three yeah so if you're the camera if the camera's here and i'm going to punch you right here mm -hmm. i'm going to throw a punch across here and and you're going to react to it now turn that sideways i missed you by that much right okay yeah now the camera doesn't see that See, so, so uh -huh. that's where the, the three dimension versus two. So you don't, right. you're, that's compressed. Now yeah. to make that even smaller, I'll actually use a larger lens and compress that distance. Uh -huh. And so it's, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the photography of it, the, the angle stunt guys got to know that when you're in a big ballroom brawl, 
you're getting twisted and turned. You always got to be aware of where the camera is. Um, uh, so you can adjust your punches and kicks to, to, to make them work. You, mm -hmm. don't, you definitely don't want to throw a punch that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, but that's choreographed too, right? So well, you're it's choreographed, but it sometimes changes. Like in a ballroom brawl, mm -hmm. you're slipping over yeah, things. Yeah, stuff's and happening. Somebody that, bumped into you, now you're turned yeah, around. Right. And so what you rehearsed, right. I'm punching that direction. Now you're punching that direction. Right. So how do I make that read? Instantly. Right, so I see. It's, it's kind of fun. It's yeah, dance. It's yeah. Dance. Yeah, that's that. Mm. I mean, we're talking about a very high skill level. And then, what about driving? Since we're here in this awesome car, <laughs> here, <laughs> let, me, here, let me hit the horn here. Okay. Oh. Do we have a? Do oh. we have? We have a. <laughs> It's, it's kind of sad, I know. But it's, it's a 19, loud. 1908. It came from a Model T cool. made by Claxton. It's old Claxton horn. It is an actual Claxton. It is a Claxton. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. it's hmm. a real antique. But cards are fun because when you're when you're doing vehicle stunts, you're controlling a three, four, five, six thousand pound object. Yeah. And it gives you a real sense of power. Yeah. And also a sense of responsibility. Yeah. So. I love driving. I love crashing. It's all it's all uh, a lot of little skills that you learn in the business about doing it and doing it safely. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I I was nominated. Uh, here, uh, I'll tell you. I was yeah, go ahead. I, I was, Let's uh, hear it. <laughs> go for well, it. I was nominated for a couple of awards <laughs> yeah. for some some vehicle stunts that I did. Um, uh, the one was for this movie called The Kingdom with Jamie Foxx, and I did these big vehicle turnovers and I did these cannon rolls and cannon rolls are um, it's a way to turn over a car which the vehicle has a cannon mounted in the car with a projectile that shoots downward into the pavement and lifts the car up. Oh, that's how that works. So there's oh. two ways you see cars turn over typically huh. in film and TV is you'll see one hit the back of a a ramp, you know it's a ramp, but sometimes you see it hit the back of another car, or yeah. you see it hit the back of a bush, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, or some boxes, and then mm -hmm. and then the car turns over. Mm -hmm. It's a pipe ramp, so it's a ramp that you mm -hmm. you drive the car portion portion of the car over, and it turns over, mm -hmm. and how high and long and so forth it dictates. And is the pipe curved like this to make no, that happen? No, I no, see. it's straight, and sometimes you have a kicker at the end, but. Uh, you huh. can get corkscrews, but you can have certain speeds and certain parts where the car will go up and, and spin. And that's a, uh, it's, there's different things involved to make that happen. And then the other type of turnover, car turnover, is, is a cannon. So you're not hitting anything. You're you're taking the car, and then you're going to start to slide it sideways where, where you want to turn over. You start to slide it sideways, and then you push a button, and it fires a cannon. Fire that projectile down the ground and it lifts the car up, that part of the car, mm -hmm. and it causes it to roll. And it's very violent. And that's what was so cool about doing it. So I did three of them in this movie, The Kingdom, and, and that whole sequence um, earned uh, 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 several uh, Screen Actors Guild nomination, a World's Horse Award. And then I got, you know, other uh, nominations from doing motorcycle stunts on Sons of Anarchy for years. And so with the back to the cannon, using the that the cannon for the car to flip, what about the landing? How do you, what's going on with the landing? Well, um, sometimes, oh, seldom do you know exactly how it's going to land, okay? Um, first of all, the car is prepped. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the, the car is prepped and we got a roll cage. So there's nothing short of having a roll cage you'd put on a, in a NASCAR. Mm -hmm. You see these guys wrecking at 200 miles an hour and then getting out. Right? Yeah, yeah. We use the same technology. We rob from that industry. We rob from wherever we can. Same type of helmets, head and neck restraints, roll cages, reinforcements. Right. Da, 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 da. But but the landing, what's good about it is, is a car will crumple and that absorbs energy. Yeah, okay. So when cars... Um, uh, when metal t absorbs the energy, it's just a little impact on us. Yeah. But not always, because the roll cage is right underneath that metal, so it doesn't have a lot. All right. So a lot of times it's pretty jarring. Yeah. And sometimes. Yeah. It, it sometimes um, uh, you you know you, you know if you're un unfortunate, you'll go nighty night for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I you, see. I, mean, I see. You'll 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 have to be woken up. Hey, Alan. Alan. <laughs> what? Hey, how'd it go? <laughs> we got the shot. Okay, good. That's Want to do it again? No, that's fine, Alan. <laughs>
I'm not afraid. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the what you were saying about power and responsibility, handling a car, driving at high speeds with great skill is a real thrill to that. I've only done a little bit of it, but I loved it. And um, I'm just trying to think if I would associate that with freedom, you know, only to the extent that um, if you can handle something that at, at, with skill and at, at a high speed like that, and you feel like you are in control of it, um, I don't know, it's a special feeling. I think you, you, you touched on some good points there because there is freedom in this because it's not a Disneyland ride that you sit and buckle up right. and you're going for the ride. You're in control, yeah. you're the one. You're the one making that decision, turn here, break here, uh, making those decisions yeah. based on your knowledge, your feel. Um, uh, so, uh, it, it, there, there's 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 freedom. It's not it's not a ride. And there's, no, there's, no. There's, so so there's no. there's great freedom in it because when you do it and you do it right, mm -hmm. there's nothing like the euphoric of doing a big, yeah, a, that, big a big stunt. You feel so euphoric, and you're you're high for hours, if not days, if it's something really cool. And, mm -hmm. But in the film industry, it lasts about ten minutes, mm -hmm. if that. Why? Because you do this big, awesome stunt, and, you, yeah. and everybody goes, hey, great job. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the right, next one. Right, exactly. And you're like going, hey, but okay, we're moving on to the <laughs> next one. I just we're rocked the world, man. Yeah, yeah now, now we're moving on to some talking heads. <laughs> yes, some actors right. Doing some dialogue. Right, like, we're on a production All schedule right. here. That's okay, but I'm still high. My <laughs> yeah, adrenaline yeah. still spiked oh pretty good. <laughs> I think so. That's uh, Have you found with your adrenaline, because that's a big, those are adrenaline rushes, but do you feel like that was ever almost like an addiction or was it something that <laughs> i mean right I, I, the addiction is good because i i i self-confess call myself an adrenaline junkie mm -hmm. um I, I mean i i do a lot less now but not by choice it's just because of my lifestyle but uh for years and years i mean i got into skydiving and and scuba diving and racing motorcycles racing cars mm -hmm. um doing you know uh rock climbing anything that was uh, it would give me that little squirt of the most powerful drug, adrenaline. Yeah, I was, I, I love that, and it's, yeah. it is addicting in, in, in a sense. And that's where people don't, if they don't know how to handle it, they push it too far. Yeah, and then they end up maybe not surviving. Yeah, right. You know, so you got to know when you're like, okay. And that's what I did when I did those base jumps I was talking about. Uh huh. Those base jumps were stupid and and it was a adrenaline rush i mean the ground's right there i'm yeah. all i mean and you don't this, have a choice yeah it's like uh, you know this this could take me in and i got away with it but i had the mindset of going i got away with it i'm going down that path quick and i quit after years of skydiving yeah. 1100 skydiving right. and i was like you know well, that was my passion and then i was just like oh i'm starting to go down a very slippery slope here so well yeah. that's good you knew when to quit you know, I was, I was lucky. You quit when you're ahead. I mean, you've got to have yeah, really good yeah. judgment for that, right? Yeah. So, so there's a lot of judgment involved in what in that kind of performance um, overall. You know, over a span of a career, but also moment to moment, right? You're judging yeah, all the time. Yeah. Distance and timing and energy and it's everything. always learning. You know, I always say stunts. The 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 more you know, the more you work. So for somebody, how do I become a stunt guy? Okay, um, and uh, there's you know the different ways I talked about, but when you get into stunts, the more you know, the more you work. Mm -hmm. So an old timer, old curmudgeon, cowboy guy, when I was getting started, uh, told me he goes, if you only know how to ride horses, you're only going to get jobs riding horses. Yeah. I'm like, ah. Oh. Now I, did, I wasn't a horse guy, but I was like, I was just kind of an athlete in high school and college, so I was like, uh -huh. hey, I can fall pretty good. Right. Um, but I took that to heart and I learned every aspect of stunts. So driving and fights and fire and, and, and then I got into rigging. So I'm rigging the stunts. Then I got into designing and, and fabricating stunt equipment. Mm. I made my own airbag that I've fallen 70 feet into. Mm. I, I made harnesses for me. Then I started making them for other people and companies. Circus Soleil was one of my customers. I'm making harnesses for them. What a liability, but I was like, I was just into it. Yeah. So I learned, and then I started coordinating, and I'm coordinating and directing stunts. So I had my hand in every aspect of stunts 
from that attitude of the more I know, the more I'm going to work. And I want to work all the time because it's a passion. Right. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And it's so great to live your passion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what we really want to be doing is living our passion. Right. So um, as a kid, did you think of yourself as something of a daredevil? Did you ever look at movies and go, oh, that'd be so cool to do? Or did you love carnival rides or you just were athletic and then you've kind of figured this out or combination they... uh-huh yeah kind of combination that's a good question because i look back and people ask me that but i look back like how did i get into that it's a crazy very unique career and i was always adventurous mm -hmm. so i wasn't a daredevil but my dad was special forces mm -hmm. and green beret and he you know he, i would go out and watch him you know parachute out of airplanes as a small kid i'd watch that mm -hmm. and then my dad had me doing parachute landing falls practicing parachute landing falls off our coffee table when i was eight, oh, seven, eight, seven. i see okay yeah and then i would see this the, i saw the training that they did to become um uh, army parachutists and they had this zip line they would go down as part of the training i took that idea and made my first zip line with no help from an adult and took a half inch manila <laughs> rope and hooked it from tree to tree and took a pulley that I found mm -hmm. and slid between tree to tree, my first zip line, eh, probably age 13. Mm -hmm. and, wow. and so I was adventurous. I, my dad gave me a parachute and I took this parachute and I made a little sled and I would take it out to a big open field and inflate the parachute and let the wind pull the parachute as I laid back on the sled and it was, you know nobody taught me how to do that i right. just was just adventurous kid. Yeah, yeah yeah and i think those backgrounds are what and then then also my background i was a pole vaulter i was a springboard diver i played football mm -hmm. and those uh those sports helped me in in stunts so with those and my adventurous attitude it just kind of meshed it would just you know and then i lucked out because how did i get started i answered the ad in the paper for stuntmen one. I was in between jobs. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I'm like, oh, what do I want to do now? Because I was a bartender and then I was a snow ski instructor and the mm -hmm. season just ended. And I'm like, what do I want to do now? Mm -hmm. Oh, stuntmen one and will train. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, and I called him up and it was for this live stunt show and where I, was, I was played a gunfighter and I got shot off a balcony 14 times a day. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> and I loved it. That was my beginning. I said, I want to do this. Yeah. I'm getting paid to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's Absolutely. adventurous and exciting. Yeah. That's how I got started. Yeah, yeah, the word adventure came to mind earlier in our conversation. And I think that's, um, you know, wherever you find your adventure, and yours, your version of it is more extreme than most people's, but that's what it's about. I mean, I, I guess, certainly for me, that's what I'm always in search of. And things mm -hmm. get a little too... Um, predictable or too calm you know i'm looking for what what could spice it up yeah. you know what could yeah, change it up something different that i don't know how to do you know yeah. so yeah. i often find myself in, in the position where i don't know what i'm doing and i'm learning on the fly i'm uh because yeah otherwise um why be here yeah yeah no no it would life would be boring it would be boring and some people are okay with boring lives yeah it, it, it or maybe it's not them. boring to them you know right, I, right, you got to right, find right. what's your definition of that and your definition of of adventure that is and your yeah. definition of adventure you know is more extreme right i i, I looking back yes mm -hmm. it is you know my 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 parents and my relatives when i got into stunts said can't you find another line of work like selling oh. insurance? Oh, that's oh. what they tell me. I go, yeah. well, that would be the death of me. Yeah, I'm glad there's people selling insurance because I, yeah, yeah, I, you I, I, I have. <laughs> but for me to sit behind a desk is not my DNA. It's yeah, not, it's not. Yeah, what what I thrive on and can be myself 100. percent Yeah. So for you, I think that's really cool. You found your your passion, and it's it's a. It's like, for me, stunts is a passion. When, yeah. And when it's a passion, it's not a job. Exactly. I mean, I work my ass off. No, no, you know? not without a and, and, without and, and I love working, actually. Not without risk. Yeah. It's not without yeah. hard work and, and ups yeah. and downs and failures and successes. Yeah. No, it's not without that. But but it's different when it's the passion versus, you know, I, I, I in the stunt business, we, get, we, we typically say we get to go to work. We don't have to go to work, mm -hmm. you know. 
Yeah, I think the same as, uh, as a musician. And I know a lot of musicians would say the same, that um, we play to work. Work is playing, literally playing, you know. Um, yeah. And that's, uh, but I think anyone can find that in their life, wherever they find it. Some people might find it flower arranging, and that's awesome, whatever it is. Thank um, goodness that's the freedom of life, is it's thinking is we're all different. Yes, we're all different. And <laughs> your, your, your risk tolerance, everyone's tolerance for risk is different, too. Sure. So obviously you have a high tolerance, but it's not. You know, you're not being evil Knievel about no. it either. Sometimes there's a high pain tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, yeah. Uh, have you experienced a lot of well, pain? Well, in your yeah, you do. Career? You know, and that's a good question. Hey, have you ever been hurt? Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, I, I like to say if it's kind of like playing football. If you play long enough, you're going to get you're going to get hurt. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, it's not serious. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, so but you but there's times where it's not serious, but you got pain. Here's an example. Director says, "Hey, okay, we need this guy. He's going to." Uh, I remember the first time I did a fight scene with Chuck Norris, true story, and I was downtown Dallas, and I'm doing this fight scene with Chuck Norris, and I got to fall back and land on my back on the concrete sidewalk. Oof. Okay. It's okay. called a flat back. Yeah. And um, sometimes they just knock the bejeebies out of you. Mm -hmm. and, mm. and when you do it, your body goes, okay, that hurt. Now you stand up, and they're like, okay, we got to go again. Mm -hmm. We got to do it again. Your body's going, no, that hurt the first time, so no, I'm not going to do it. So you have to <laughs> tell your body. So you have to cue out pain mm -hmm. because your body is keeps you safe going, that hurt the first time. We're not going to do it the second time. Right. So I've got to block that out and be able to do it even harder the next time because they go, yeah, can you get up higher, get your feet up uh, a little higher to, uh, to land more on your back? And, uh, and so pain is part of what we do yeah and so you, you you deal with it. we we that's what we signed up for yeah you know I, so i guess you probably don't miss that part of it very much <laughs> you're not doing it in the same way you were you're assuming i miss it because when you're an older stink guy <laughs> it's accumulative in some degree <laughs> <laughs> so no i don't i don't get i don't get those thumpers and hurt like that but yeah now over the tolls of it from you know, uh, you know, just a terribly wrecked neck to, you know, I've had seven knee surgeries. Wow. And I've shattered my femur, still a rod in that femur. I've had a broken three collarbones. I've broken all three collarbones. <laughs> wow. Now you are special. Isn't that, isn't that special? <laughs> I, I think said, that's unique. I, I said that. Say. <laughs> you, you only yeah. have two, right? <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, I broke this one twice and this one once. Okay, and, and, I can add. But but you know, when you get older, kind of those start creeping up, kind of going up. Okay, yeah, there's 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 some there's some there's some residual pain that happens. So mm -hmm. it it behooves me to stay flexible and stay active. But yeah, you know, I'm paying the price. Like the worst injury, what's the worst injury I've had? Probably hearing loss. Oh, it, and it's from gunshots and explosions. Oh, where yeah. I refuse to wear earplugs. You didn't wear I, ears. No, I didn't wear hearing protection because mm. I needed to hear something or I had dialogue right before. Uh, and I was younger and I was I was invincible. Nothing's going right. to damage me. I'm yeah, young sure. and dumb. And sure. So, yeah. 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 So, so that's that's where I walk away going, you know what? You, you got to protect. You've got to protect your hearing. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Yeah. With guns and it's yeah. And it happens pretty quick, too. Yeah, and then, then over -expo the exposure of it, because I did something I figured out. It was like close to like 7,000 live stunt performances with weapons. Wow, that is a that, lot. You know, when you're doing five a day for seven years. Yeah, you know, yeah. And the first year was 14 a day. That's... You know, it's, it, you know, it, 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 it's paid its price. But yeah, I yeah. wouldn't change it for, for anything because, yeah. you know, it's been a great ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of great rides, you know, we should take this for a... Um, yeah, we, we let's take it for, for a spin. All right. That sounds good. Yeah. All right. All right. Back up. with thoughts about fear and adventure and risk and freedom.
to like, subscribe, comment, etc. And I'll be back really soon with more about how to live free in a system designed to imprison you. Uh-uh, not gonna happen. Mm -mm, not gonna happen.